Hello everyone! After more than 14,000 of you have voted, uh, we have a winner for our next series. Uh, the winner is 2013 Candidates Tournament. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a tournament played uh, in England uh, in a building called Savoy Place. And it was, a double, uh, it was an 8 player double round robin. Uh, not like uh, the 1959 Candidates Tournament where everyone played 4 times against everyone else. So uh, everyone will uh, face each other uh, twice and uh, since this is the first video we're making in this, in this series uh, I, I think it would be a, a nice idea to introduce the players. So uh, let's start. Uh, first we have Magnus Carlsen, of course uh, everyone knows who he is now but uh, even then um, before he even uh, entered the, the candidates tournament or even before he became world champion uh, he was the highest rated player in this tournament uh, I believe he was uh, 2872 uh, almost almost 70 points higher rated than uh, second uh, second uh, highest rated uh, Vladimir Kramnik and third highest rated uh, Levan Aronian so he was already already a, a well-known uh, star uh, in the uprising so uh, after Carlsen we have Levan Aronian uh, then after Aronian we have uh, Boris Gelfand, uh, after Gelfand we have uh, uh, Grish, uh, Alexander Grishchuk and uh, it's interesting, uh, in 2013 when the Candidates Tournament was played, uh, Grishchuk was the only uh, player out of these eight who, who, who was a smoker. Uh, so whenever he wanted to light a cigarette during, uh, during the games he had to completely leave the building because there was no uh, place where, where he could have a smoke. So uh, I don't know if he still smokes, but uh, at that time I'm sure that was very annoying for him. Uh, and he said that he enjoyed uh, he enjoyed London very much. The only thing he didn't enjoy was the was the weather, which you know could be uh, can be kind of annoying when you have to smoke outside. Uh, so then we have uh, Vasily Ivanchuk. Uh, he also uh, gave a lot of drama to this tournament, but you'll see that uh, after we cover some games. Uh, then we have Vladimir Kramnik, uh, also a member of the uh, 2800 club uh, in those days. And uh, lastly, we have uh, <laughs> Peter Svidler uh, with, with a very nice haircut. So, uh, th those are the players. And uh, this, uh, for round one, I will only show one game. It's uh, 11 Aronian versus Magnus Carlsen. Uh, Magnus Carlsen was the favorite going into this tournament. Uh, Aronian and Kramnik were second favorites. So, uh, it's a very important game. Carlsen has the black pieces against Aronian. So, let's see this game. And round one uh, was a, a relatively peaceful, uh, but already from round two it's gonna it's gonna get very interesting. Uh, Aronian opens with d4. We have knight to f6, c4, e6, and knight to f3. The antonyms of Indian, and Carlson goes for bishop to b4. Uh, this comes with check. It's the Bogo Indian defense, and it's a defense that uh, has enjoyed a status of being extremely solid for for a very long time. It was a, f a favorite opening of players such as Tigran Petrosin and Ulf Anderson, who were who were both known for their um, uh, for their defensive skills. And uh, even Boris Spassky uh, employed this opening during the during the 80s. Later, when he just wanted to to finish uh, finish the games quickly, and uh, you know, ju just uh, as a nice drawing resource. Uh, bishop to d2. We have bishop captures, queen captures, and now d5. Uh, knight to c3. Uh, we have castles e3 and queen to e7. Uh, here, uh, Arnion goes for rook to c1, uh, rook to d8, and now queen to c2 getting the queen off of the d-file. Uh, but uh, other than queen to c2, later Aronian said that uh, probably best was c captures on d5. And after c captures, e captures, uh, here white could white could maybe go for some advantage. Uh, but after rook to d8, he played queen to c2, and now we have a6. Uh, a3, knight b to d7, uh, bishop to e2, and d captures on c4, uh, releasing the tension in the center. Uh, bishop captures on c4, and you do have to capture this uh, immediately. Even though you just played bishop to e2, you have to lose a tempo here. Uh, if you if you castle or something, then black can indeed play b5 and defend the c4 pawn. Uh, after a4, c6 uh, is perfectly fine, and the black will keep his extra pawn uh, and a better position. Uh, so after d captures on c4, you do have to lose a tempo. Bishop captures, now comes c5, and uh, bishop back to e2. Uh, we have b5. Uh, D captures on c5, queen captures on c5, and b4 now. Uh, Carlsen brings the queen back, queen, queen back to e7, and now castles by Aronian. 
Uh, bishop to b7, and uh, here you could uh, you could probably do uh, a lot of different uh, different ideas. Uh, you could maybe maybe try and uh, bring this knight, uh, maybe bring the knight over to b3, maybe find an outpost uh, on c5. Uh, but you know that Carlsen is going to play rook eight to c8, so. Uh, you you do have to do something. Uh, in in this position, Aryan decided to go a4. He immediately decided to exchange everything on the queen side, uh, and Carlsen goes for it. He plays queen captures on b4, pawn captures, pawn captures, and now Aryan didn't uh, grab the pawn back immediately. Uh, first, he played queen to b1. Although you could uh, you can capture the pawn immediately after knight captures on b5, uh, but he probably didn't want to. Uh, calculate what happens after rook rook 8 to c8 as now your knight is attacked here uh, you have to figure out after you move the queen what if bishop captures and then you can't capture with the bishop because the knight would be hanging on b5 uh, so maybe you would have to break your pawn structure here uh, but it's actually perfectly fine after queen to d2 now you force black to capture as the queen is under attack so after queen captures knight captures now there's no longer a problem of your knight being attacked on b5 uh, and after after black plays something like bishop to a6 simply captures captures and rook to a1 bishop captures bishop captures uh, a perfectly equal position where white does have a bishop but it's pretty meaningless as the, the, the play is only on one side uh, of the board uh, so after this a captures on b5 uh, we have queen to b1 uh, first offering a trade of queens, uh, Carlsen accepts this, queen captures, rook captures, and now there, there's, there is no way of actually defending the b-pawn as it's attacked three times, so bishop captures, bishop captures, and now rook to b8 by Carlsen. Uh, knight captures on b5, uh, we have knight to e5 attacking the bishop, uh, knight to d4, now bishop captures, knight captures, and rook captures on b1. Rook captures on b1, and if you look at the position, it's uh, pretty much identical, uh, but uh, this is only move 25 and there was the uh, 30 move rule. You were not allowed to make a draw unless 30 moves were made. Uh, of course, you could make a draw by threefold repetition or you know, if it's a stalemate, but uh, you could not agree to a draw unless at least uh, 30 moves were made on the board. Uh, so here, uh, both Carlsen and uh, Aronian decided to... Uh, decided, uh, uh, be funny, you know, and create something uh, funny on the board. Uh, so we have h6, uh, h3, g5 now, g4, king g7, king g2, uh, rook to d7, rook to b2, uh, rook to c7, knight to d4, knight to d5, and here Arnhem played rook to c2, and this is move 31, so in this position the players agree to a draw uh, in a completely symmetrical position, as you can see here. Very nice. Uh, and I don't think there's, uh, I, I mean, it's it's okay uh, to, you can't really force someone not to draw the game. Uh, players will always find a way to draw the game, even if you force them to make at least 30 moves, uh, then they're going to do something like this. But, uh, you know, if a position is drawn, a position is drawn. Uh, what, uh, I mean, it's useful because... Uh, of course, uh, w when you have like team against team, then you don't want uh, a quick draws like uh, five moves and then a draw where where no chess was ever played. But uh, in in that position, a move twenty five, that I don't think that uh, rule uh, should apply there. Uh, but regardless, uh, so this was the game from round one, Levin Arena versus Magnus Carlsen, and uh, all of the games from round one were drawn. So uh, this is the only game I will show from round one and. Uh, as of uh, as of tomorrow, uh, we're gonna have two rounds, uh, two games for each round, or or more if uh, more than two games will be interesting. Uh, but uh, as of round two, already uh, there will be a, a lot of craziness, so uh, we will always have at least two interesting games to show uh, per round. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon uh, with a game from round two of the 2013 Candidates Tournament. Thank you all.